Hello there everybody, Nick Payne here, and this is my list of my least favourite to favourite films of 2015 that I saw at the cinema. So this will include films from 2014 as well, actually, just one film from 2014 um, as well. I, I'm doing this now because um, I did a, my review of The Conjuring 2 on Tuesday, I filmed and edited it and uploaded it yesterday, Wednesday, so this is June 28th and 29th, today is June 30th, when you're, uh, that when I'm recording this, um, Thursday the 30th, um, yeah, so before I jump into my review of The Secret Life of Pets, which will be done soon, um, I saw that on Tuesday, um, after I've done, re recorded The Conjuring 2 review, but before I did the second sketch, I did the first sketch before the review and then the review, but the second sketch was done afterwards, as was the editing. Um, which was done all day, to be honest. Hold on. Sorry, my tripod wasn't stay. didn't look stay stable. Didn't look stable. Hang on. Here we go. Um, yeah, so before I do my review of The Secret Life of Pets, which I saw on Tuesday, um, I thought I'd do my list of least favourite to favourite films of 2015. Well, ones that I saw at the cinema, so that includes one 2014 film. And, and 2016's one will also include one from 2014, because um, the, these films from a previous year, or the la the year just gone, will may still be showing, so the year just gone, you'll probably get this film that's just been released at the end of the year, and it's still playing in, that, in the year you're now in. Or it's a re-showing or a special showing such as Empire, they do Empire Juniors and Empire Seniors. So let's get down to the list. Before um, we get down to the ranking, I should tell you which films I've seen, I saw last year. So you know what film to expect on the ranking, where they're coming from. I, I, couldn't, I, probably, I wouldn't have been able to see every film of last year. No, I, not even if I was made of money or time. Um, almost impossible, unless you're really, unless you're a critic with a lot of money slash time on their hands. Um, there was a some that I didn't get to see, there was a couple of the summer movies I would have liked to see. Um, some, probably now glad I didn't see, like Pixels and Fantastic Four, but some I would have thought, actually, that looked pretty good, I would have liked to have seen that, like Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, and The Man From Uncle, there was another one that looked good. Um, can't think of it right now. And this summer, I, this summer, 2016, it actually looks like there's even more great stuff. And I think I'll be able to see a less, I might only see less stuff. I've not got much money now, so, um, not so luck. probably won't be so lucky, but at least one or two uh, this July or August. One or two, maybe three, hopefully. So maybe some more reviews. So, although I said Secret Life of Pets was the next review, and there'll be a, doing reviews or rant, uh, it's not rants, reactions afterwards, and it said next review or next reaction or something at the end, this may change to set depending on what I, if I see something at the cinema um, not too long afterwards, or do that review after the review mentioned at the end of the last one. And put that in the as the next one after that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so here we go. List of the two thousand and six, sorry, two thousand and fifteen movies I saw. I shall put them out in order: Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb, Shaun the Sheep movie, Cinderella twenty fifteen, Marvel's Avengers: Age of Ultron, Jurassic World, Terminator Genesis, Ted two. Ant-Man, Minions, Inside Out, Hotel Transylvania 2, Spectre, and Star Wars The Force Awakens. So uh, let us begin the list with number 13, Terminator Genesis. Okay, the re- I will admit now that I actually like every single movie I did see at the cinema. I liked every single one. But the problem with Terminator Genesis was that the fact I didn't really have much of a reaction to it. I liked it and there were some good moments, uh, some stuff I could critique. But my overall reaction was... Nothing. I mean, in fact, 
I didn't even have a reaction going out of the cinema, walking home. It was actually on the, whilst not too far away from home, about a good 10, 15 minute walks from the cinema, and I was about to go over, about to go over a rail foot, railway footbridge you may have seen um, in some of my some of my videos or on the other side. I was go starting to go and walk up the steps to us and then go down the ramp up towards the bridge. And I was like, I don't have a reaction. Oh, sorry, loud noises outside. I forgot to mention windows closed though, but I've got my door open for air. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I didn't have a reaction. I had no reaction to Terminator Genesis, and I didn't even realise it for another 15 or si 15 minutes. At max, about 10 to 15 minutes. There, I really have no reaction to Terminator Genesis. It's a good film, but I didn't really feel anything. Uh, good action. Plot needs a bit more work. So yeah, Terminator Genesis, it's um... I don't know what the... F what's it supposed to be? Like, is it supposed to be a reboot? Um, is it supposed to be... Um, I, yeah, it's a reboot. Um, but it's also, but it's kind of set in the same timeline, but changes a lot of stuff. So it changes stuff, so the events of the first four would not have happened. They would have changed it a little bit. In fact, I think... I think... I know for a fact that in all three of the the first three movies, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Swar I'm going to botch up his name, Schwarzenegger's, uh, Schwarzenegger's, oh, sod it, Arnold Schwarzenegger's name, sorry, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jesus Christ, Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger's um, Terminator characters, in each of the first three films, dies at the end. At each one, I, I'm, I, well, I think he does at the first one. He definitely did in the second and third. Well, in the first one, he was a villain, so I guess, obviously. Um, in the fourth, I don't think he's in the fourth one, and if he does, he's not cre credited. Um, more in the trailers, at least. Um, number five, his, ter his Terminator character in the fifth one does not die. It, it make you, you think he does, which is a bit sad. But then he comes back, which is then, because they, at first you're happy and then wait, you go, wait, all the other times he died. Or his Terminator died, so why is he here? Why is he still alive here? So strange. I'm glad he's back in the film, though. It's a, and I think he had fun. So that was good. I hope he will be in the future films, at least the next, if they do any, at least the next one. Um... I think they'll be going to China soon, because they made most of their money there. So they're probably going to film in China because of that. Yeah, I didn't really have much of a reaction to, to Terminator Genesis. Most of this is spewing out the plot or the story, and the plot of the film. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Um, good action, but not much on story. Oh, and it ruins some plot, and it ruins a plot twist in the trailers. Thankfully, another twist, which could be... It does keep a bit hidden, and I won't reveal to you. I just will... I'll just tell you that it concerns Matt Smith. From Doctor Who. Yay. Okay, uh, number 12. This is where we get... This is where we get the good... Better movies. Um, that was a good movie, but... We're going to get better ones now. We have... And this time I actually have a reaction. Number 12 is Minions. <laughs> Yeah, Minions, um, the 2015 Despicable Me spin-off animated movie featuring three Minions, or at least for the m most of the time, along with the villainous Scarlet... I can't remember her second name, but it's, she's played by Sandra Bullock. And, it's, and, it's, and her husband slash partner slash henchman slash other, whatever you want to call him, um... What's it? I can't remember. I had it, but I can't remember. Um. Oh, whatever. It it runs. Oh, it. No, you you'll know who who it is when you if you watch the film you'll know who it is. Um. It's a very obvious name, but I can't put my name on it. Finger on it. Ah, uh, damn it. Oh well, I'll move on. Well. Well, basically, in the plot, what happens is that these min after several years of failing at serving their masters, three minions 
there's a, there's a group of minions are hiding in, I think it's in Russia or the Arctic. And so three of them decide to go out and find a new master. And uh, this is 1980, not 1986, 1968. So they travel to New York. Um, and then it's in New York that they discover the villain con at a left wall landing. So they go to that. Nice appearance from Michael Keaton in this in a scene at this point. So they pass a, a test that's uh, Scarlet Overlord, Scarlet Overlord, I think, um, gives um, to the crowd. If if anyone could get an item out of her hand or something, they would become her new henchman or henchmen. And the minions are the only ones who do this, and without anyone even noticing, to be honest. We're all focused on all the other people. Um, very funny to see a villain con, by the way. And so, she takes the minions as her new henchmen, and they travel to... Um, London, because she plans to steal the crown jewels. Which, they do. And Bob accidentally becomes king, and then gives the power to Sun. Sorry, Sun, to Scarlet. And then they have to stop her, overthrow her, and stop her evil plans, which they do. Um, and, then, and at the end of the film, they'll fight. They find Gru. They find a young Gru, who, which then leads on into the two Despicable Me films, which I have also not seen. Um, got number one on record on those, that so I might watch that at some point. So yeah, um, uh, I found Minions funny. I found it really funny. There was it had a good plot. But it wasn't great, it had problems, it had maybe character problems, but mostly plot problems. Um, it was a very funny movie though, it was quite fun. If you've got young children, this will be a harmless, fun entertainment for them. Even, well, unless you're talking about speech patterns, in which case that might not, um, that might not improve in their brain cells when at a younger age. Oh, and there's, there's also quite a few um, naughty, older audience jokes in this um, sprung in every now and again. Um, in fact, Troby, or Mr Tardis, reviews, even in a podcast that he does, that he did, used to do, even says that there was more nudity in Minions than Terminator Genesis. In fact, if you were to say female nudity, I would agree. If you were to say male nudity, no. No, there's far more in Terminator Genesis than male nudity, but female nudity, not too much. Strange, to be honest. If it was a 15, it probably would have. But it was actually a 12A, so... Meh. Terminator, not Minions. Minions was a U. But enough about nudity, let's go Let's go back to fully clothed characters with number 11. Oh yeah, round up minion, rounding up Minions. Funny, good, entertainment, harmless, but not very strong on story. Your characters. Well, it's characters, maybe, but not story. Okay, number 11, Hotel Transylvania 2. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with a monster. I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with a monster. I'm okay, we're getting to the good, okay, we're getting to the really good movies. This is where the movies start to have really good stories and plots and characters and makes you all really hot well. The reason Hotel Transylvania 2 is actually this low is because it doesn't do as well as some of the others. I think some of the others have better plots or better pack characters. But this is the weakest of the really good ones. Um, I just, it was really funny. Uh, number one, we saw number one a few days beforehand and not too long ago as well, to be honest. Um, and that's actually a funny and entertaining movie. I think number two is actually better than that because that has a bit more um, that's a better story, a better plot, better characters, it's got some all-around better stuff. Um, but I don't think it does it as well as the top ten movies on the list. Um, it's it's still an enjoyable film, it's really good. Adam Sandler is a really good Dracula. I think he gets slated a lot because of his other comedies. Especially Pixels was, a re was really slated last year. Which makes me partly thank grateful I actually didn't watch it. Hotel Transylvania 2 is definitely a more well received film for Sandler last year than Pixels ever will be. But the first Hotel, Hotel Transylvania film will probably be a much better received film than Pixels. Um, my, I think the weakest point of that, of Hotel Transylvania 2, is that it does still fall into the trap of a generic movie 
storyline, at least animated or kids movie character movie storyline, which is something that the Secret Life of Pets actually also falls under a trap of. It falls into the, that type of trap. Um, I, I say they're both on par with each other, but actually, number Hotel Transylvania two might be better than Secret Life of Pets. Um, it's an again, it's an enjoyable, harmless movie for children. Uh, again, watch out for the speech impediment moments, but they're not as bad. It's not as bad. It's just blah 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 as opposed to blah. And uh, it's blah 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 as opposed to minion speech. I'm sorry, I did a really bad impression of it. Um, yeah, there's not really much to say about this. It's a really good movie. It's just not as good as the top ten, but it does better to the past, the previous two. And um, it does a better story plot and characters. Uh, and, oh, and better animation, I would say. Probably better animation than... Um, Minions. Although, all the, the animated movies uh, that I saw this year, all the animated ones look really stunning. Um, animation. But, I think... Uh, yeah. I would say out of the two obvious CG films, uh, I think there's about three CG move animated movies, but out of the two obvious ones, the there's one that might, out of the two obvious ones, obviously they're definitely CG, out of the two obvious ones, it's the better one. It's better. It's the better, and it's really fun and entertaining. Uh, yeah. If you like the first one, you'll probably like this one even more. Or maybe not as much, I don't know. Okay, number ten. Tonight at the museum, Secrets of the Tomb. Okay, the 2014 movie I saw um, last year in January. For some reason, Radio Times only gives us a two star, which is which is I don't know why. Um, what's that? not poor, that's not quite, I think it's, no, average is for, I'm not sure. Um, two stars, it doesn't mean good. I think it could be worse. Not certain, but it only got two star for some reason. Um, I don't know why, I thought this was the best of the of the trilogy, the Night at the Museum trilogy, from 2006 and 2009, got one and two. Two is also known as Battle of the Smithsonian, and this one is also known as, the, as number three. Night no, Museum 3. So, yeah, I'm not sure why this one isn't liked that much, but at least by Radio Times. Um, I think most people like it. I would admit, I'm not going to... No, I think this one's better than the previous two. I think this is the best one. Um, it's pretty good. The story might be a little down. I think the second had a better story than for the number one. Um, maybe it had... The, I think maybe number two had the best characters, though. Uh, it's two or... It's maybe one or two had a, maybe characters as an advantage the other two had over this one. Story, I would say number two has the best story. Um, actually, two most actually maybe now I think about it, two might be the better one, but three might be my favourite. Um, I don't know. I think this one's just a good story, a good film. Um, really well done. Um, really well made. Everyone knows what they're doing. They've had eight to nine years on this film film series. They know what they've done. They know what they're doing. They make a really good effort on finishing it, if this is the last one. And it ties up really well. There's a few continuity mistakes, but... It's still a... It doesn't worry you too much. Um, unlike Terminator Genesis. Um, but then again, that was trying to be a reboot anyway, so... Um, yeah, so... It's... It's still... It's still a really good movie. It's not... It's not as good as some of the others on this list, which is just why it's this low down. And like I said, I'm even thinking maybe it's not as good as number two. Um, maybe only slightly better than one, to be honest. Um, actually, one's pretty good. In fact, they all are. The other two got three star from Radio Times, but to be honest, I would probably give all of them a four. Um, to be honest, I'd give every, all of them from Hotel Transylvania onwards four or five. But the other two may be debated between three and four. Um, yeah, it's just a really good movie, um, um, yeah, really, it's really good, um, really like it, it looks really cool, the, the effects are great, 
The sets look great. I like how, like Minions, it's set in Britain, London to be precise. Uh, yeah, it's set in London again, so we've got at least we've got about two US movies. Is it two movies from the United States that go and so that go to London to set it, and so that actually is set in London. And whilst with live action movies, this is a bit easier. Uh, animation is a bit harder, especially if you have to draw or CG or all that lands all those landscapes. If you've seen 101 Dalmatians, you'll notice a bit. You'll know, you'll marvel. You'll probably marvel the the, the animated one, your and the uh, direct DVD sequel. Um, it, they, it actually looks pretty cool. Lon London does. Of course, in an animation one, you'll probably miss out a few places. Whilst live action, you'll be able to capture everything. Again, Conjuring Two does this as well. This earlier this year, they they did some several shots of London, both um, setting it in the seventies. Um, so they did really good jobs with that. I um, don't think any other American film from the last two years I've seen. I think yeah, British film has have with Spectre and. Um, and Paddington, past two or three years, um, and Shaun the Sheep is a British film, but it's I don't know what city it's set. In. It's just called Big City, so it's it's a it's a British city, but it's fictional, like Metropolis and um, Gotham in Batman v Superman. Um, yeah, so Night at the Museum did a really good job. Secret of the Tomb did a really good job of ending the trilogy slash franchise. Uh, if there's going to be any more, I'm looking. I wouldn't mind. I'd be looking forward to them. Um, as for now, it's a, done a pretty good job. Okay, moving on to number nine, Ant-Man. Probably Marvel's. It's probably one of the we weaker Marvel f um, cinematic universe installments. Though to be honest, I haven't seen all of them yet. I've seen the three Iron Mans, the two Avengers, um, this one, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, and that's it. I think. I haven't got to and the Incredible Hulk. I haven't got round to seeing the two, the three Captain Americas or the two fours. And I doubt I'll get to see every other, every single movie that comes out between now and Infinity War Part Two or whatever it's going to be called now. Because they've changed the title. Um, I'll probably see some of them. I'm hoping to see Spider-Man: Homecoming at some point because I do enjoy the Spider-Man films. I think number one's the best though, the, the Sam Raimi original. Anyway, we're talking about Ant-Man, not Spider-Man. Um, this is a really good movie. It's really good. It gets quite a lot of stuff right. I'm not as aware on Ant-Man as other characters from the Marvel comics. Uh, I think one of the characters in the film who is not Ant-Man was originally Ant-Man in the comics, or at least in the cartoons. Um, not sure exactly what this is. I think this is a little different to the... Um, to them, but still being faithful, of course, it's Marvel. Um, being Marvel, it has great story, great characters, looks brilliant, it's, it makes everyone happy. Um, even if it's not one of their greatest, it's still a really good movie. They always succeed in being uh, having a good movie at the end, even if it's not one of the greatest. It's still a good movie. You can expect that from Marvel, at least in the, at least the Marvel Cinematic Universe films. Excuse me, some of, their, some of them don't really work as well. I haven't really seen a, one I would consider bad, but I would say some are not so good. Well, maybe one, and that's... Well, maybe Wolverine Origins wasn't so great. Um, I actually liked the two Fantastic Fours um, from 05 and 07. Um, but they probably wouldn't be as great. To be honest, I think most people consider those the better two to the 95 and 2015 versions. The 07 version, definitely more so. At least by rare times, I think. Um, so yeah, Ant-Man does really good. Um, now it's going, it's getting a sequel, Ant-Man and the Wasp. This is looking interesting. 
Um, yeah. There's not really much to say about Ant-Man apart from it's good. Maybe, maybe if you edited some of the swearing out and maybe some of the gory or, or violence scenes, you could have gotten a film that could have been a PG in the UK as opposed to a 12A. Yeah, I think it could have been a P... I think this one could have worked as a PG, maybe a 12 rated extended edition, um, with maybe delete, maybe get rid of some of this language, maybe maybe some of the more violence or gore scene. There's one scene that actually may be a little bit gory. Um, so you could get rid of that. Um, yeah. There's a fly in here. I think it just went in front of you guys. Yeah, there's two actually. Uh, yeah, so, Ant-Man, that was a really good movie. I really enjoyed it. Not much to say, and um, moving on to number eight.